2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. This afternoon, the sweltering conditions have given way to wind whipping through Dick Sporting Goods Park as Team USA is set to tangle with Australia. A very pleasant welcome to you along with Mark Dixon. I'm Joe Beninati. Both of these teams have wins under their belts, but only the United States was able to enjoy a day off yesterday. How might that impact the game today? Well, it was an incredibly physical game against Canada where the United States was really beat up physically, but they prevailed in outstanding fashion. But talking with Coach Richie Mead, having the day off allowed them to take a deep breath, re-energize, and he feels like they're very recharged for this match. The United States basking in the glow of a win over Canada and a fine performance from Paul Rabel. He's the subject of this bio blast presented by Sector Spider ETF. Rabel, two goals and two assists against the Canadians the other night. Great vision. Everybody knows about his scoring prowess, but he's really developed into this the face of Team USA. He is the leader of this squad, the flag bearer, and the most notable name in American lacrosse. And he gave a performance worthy of that against Canada. The Australians were involved in perhaps the most dramatic game of the first three days in this tournament, an incredible overtime performance. When Nigel Morton finally decided to take matters into his own hands, another Sector Spider ETFs Bioblast. Just an incredible game against Japan, and Nigel Morton, he's a player that works well off ball. He can also beat you off of the dribble, but he scored the game winner in double overtime against Japan. He will be the focal point of the United States defense as he leads this powerful Australian attack. He's gonna have to cool his heels for a while because as you can see on this weather report, there are definite storms in the area. This game has already been delayed, Mark, by an hour plus, and we've just been notified once again here at Dick's Sporting Goods Park that field 10 is not safe. Fans have to leave and vacate. The teams, as you can see, are also exiting how does this get set, get ready, and don't go affect these two? These, these teams have already warmed up twice, so it is takes a little bit out of you psychologically, but physically, these guys are ready to get after it, and quite frankly, they're here for the long haul. They're here to compete, win a gold medal, so whenever these games are played, they'll be ready, but it is not easy to warm up now for a third time we'll have come up and then compete. Australia lost a heartbreaker. The United States has been off since Thursday night. They're off to their dressing rooms now. We are in the middle of a weather delay. The FIL World Lacrosse Championships, presented by Trusted Choice. We'll get you back to the action as soon as possible. Welcome to the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Two severe lightning delays and two hours after the original start time, Dick Sporting Goods Park has reopened its doors for a blue division battle between Australia and the United States. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you. And Mark, these two teams have to be more than raring to go. And that includes all-world midfielder Paul Rabel, more than worthy of a bioblast presented by Sector Spider ETFs. Well, when you think about United States lacrosse, Paul Rabel has become the face of the red, white, and blue. A brilliant game the other night against Canada. Two goals and two assists. Everybody knows about the scoring prowess of number 99 in the red, white, and blue, but it's his assist and his vision that has really taken off. The Australians. Decided underdogs in this clash, but don't ever tell that to Bioblast candidate Nigel Morton. He was a hero on this field 24 hours ago. Well, such an emotional win come from behind. Double overtime against Japan, and Morton scores the hat trick, including the game winner in the sudden death overtime, which is the second overtime in international lacrosse. He loves to invert, can dodge from behind, and can also take you from up top. Two teams are meeting at midfield. You know, the timeline for this one just, just hasn't been pretty. Australia and the United States. Two different severe weather delays, each lasting upwards of an hour. And Australia had to suffer through this with Japan last night. You and I endured it too. And the end result though, karma turned around and gave us a wonderful game and hopefully that will continue again tonight. An amazing game between Australia and Japan. And hey, if you're the Australians, you're the underdogs, you're hoping, no pun intended, lightning can strike twice and they can get a victory after a weather delay. Please, Mark, please, Mark, no more fireworks <laughs> in the skies. Richie Mead now has uh, gotten to know his club extremely well. They began this week in Colorado Springs. They jumped as the 
pre-tournament favorites into these world championships, and he was very, very thrilled with the way they performed against Canada. Glenn Meredith knows they are moving up in class tonight. Yeah, no question. Uh, the, the United States, a two-year process in selecting this team. The win over Canada was a monumental achievement, beating the Maple Leafs in the first round, but they know it's just they haven't accomplished anything yet. That's just one victory on the road to gold. The United States in blue, Australia in gold. Greg Gurenlian pops the opening draw, and we are underway. The United States and Australia, each with a 1-0 mark. This is blue division round robin play. The Americans, the reigning world champs from their decision in Manchester, England in 2010, started slowly against Canada Thursday night, then got it in gear, particularly in the second quarter and getting a win over their arch rivals. A little bit of a strategy here is Marcus Holman and attackman playing up top in a midfield spot. Buchanan slings one wide of the cage. That's guarded tonight by Warren Brown, the elder statesman for this Australia squad. Number 41 is 41 years of age. A little shaky as a stopper, plays an incredibly high crease and is active around the cage and likes to clear the ball. Rabel and Seaball playing catch on the outside. Seaball shuffles in, puts that one off the outside of the post. The ricochet to the sideline, and the officials say it's United States ball. Lee Bryan, Scott McMullen, Ian Ashworth, and Kentaro Shumizu are the officials. Once again, a reminder, officials cannot referee any games of their country of origin. So in other words, we'll see no Australian or American officials out here tonight. Buchanan rolls back for Seaball. Rabel takes it from the top. Beats Callum Robinson draws the double team they swing it inside it's deflected down seaball with a great burst lost his footing on the turf fights free flag down score max seaball flags flying here at dick sporting goods park callum robinson we know he's going to have at least one foul it's going to be a slash, and we'll see what the second flag is. As Max Seabold seemed to take exception, gave a little chest bump back to Robinson. We'll see if we have offsetting penalties. Great presence of mind on display there from Seabold after he lost his balance. Once again, for those unaware, this game was delayed two hours. Severe lightning, heavy rain. Mark, as you cast your eyes out to the field, how does the surface look? It looks pretty good. Uh, it, it, it drained fairly well. You can see a lot of the black rubber pellets. Uh, coming to the surface. So what we have is a foul against Robinson, then a foul against Seabold. Seabold's foul, dead ball. So possession to the Australians. And we're going to be 5-1-5, five five, it looks like. The only problem is I'm looking to the scoreboard here at field 10, and there's no goal on the scoreboard. The referee went over and signaled just again to the score table that it was a good goal. So they should throw that marker up for Seaball. The Australians get their first offensive possession. Nathan Stiglish is normally a crease attackman. He is a big man and a good target for the likes of Nigel Morton, who takes it to the alley. Australia, seven penalties against Japan. And Robinson starts off with another slash. Morton slings it high. We just put the one up on the scoreboard. The United States <laughs> on the lead, thanks to a goal from Max Seaball. Lawyerson works a two-man game back behind the cage and floats it over the top to Morton, who had the three spot against Japan in a brilliant game. Back and forth, the opener for those two nations. Morton's hat trick lifting the Aussies to the win. Japan, Japan earlier today throttled by the Iroquois. Yeah, Japan just didn't, you know, obviously the Iroquois a little bit more talented, more athletic and bigger than the Japanese, but what a tough game to lose. Three goal advantage for the J Japanese team. Australia comes back and beats them in double overtime. And then they have to come back in about 16 hours. Really tough turnaround. Did you say 16 hours? That's the time difference for the most part between where we are, mountain time, and for the Aussies down under. This bounce shot beautifully placed to the short side. Matt Diver beats Drew Adams, and the Australians tie it at one. We saw the invert last night against the Australians. The Sharks love to attack from behind the goal, and Diver just gets ahead of steam, beats his man above goal line extended, and look at the wicked bounce shot 
to the offside of left-handed netminder Drew Adams. Beautiful placement using this artificial surface to his advantage. I know you referenced it an evening ago. Diver was a threat. He had four shots, but he couldn't find the mark. He does get one there quickly. Garenlian's two for two at the face-off X. And Drew Adams will start the clear for the United States in the blue jerseys. Drew Adams, the 27-year-old netminder, plays Major League Lacrosse for the New York Lizards. Tucker Durkin comes cross field. Evans back for Adams, who will loop it over the top, right on the money for Belial. From a key standpoint, as Mundorf makes a break for it, to the interior, looking for Hartzell, good stick check. Mark, what do these two teams have on their to-do list to enjoy success? For the United States, it's no hangover. Big win over Canada, but you can't overlook anyone, and guaranteed the United States will not overlook Australia. And crisp ball movement. This is a team fueled by the midfield, but the way to beat the Aussies is to keep the ball hot and get off-ball scores. The United States will have possession. Paul Rabel has hovered. Over top of the lacrosse ball, Rabel, two goals, two assists in the win over Canada. Richie Mead says of Rabel, he is a do-it-all type. He pays incredible attention through the meetings and practice sessions. Lawson for Rabel over the top, bullseye! Paul Rabel. Rabel, a little stare down to the Australian netminder after that rocket finds the back of the net. Watching the dynamic warm-up, Paul Rabel was first in every drill by at least 10 yards. He is hungry, he is focused, he just steps in and just rears back and unleashes a bullet past Warren Brown. We're five and a half minutes into the opening quarter of a game that's been delayed by some two hours due to severe lightning. How does the stopping and the starting affect the body? It, it, it's not terrible. I mean, these guys are in peak condition. It's more psychological, but it's also tough on the coaches. How many, okay, let's go get them, can you provide? Really, you now three times. So I think it's more of the psychological hurdle than it is the physical one. Marcus Holman, former All-American out of North Carolina, wears number one in the blue. Team USA circling it up six on six. This is Kyle Harrison, played his collegiate ball at Johns Hopkins University. Pennell and Mundorf behind the goal. Thule, big man, 6'3", 230. That's a matchup problem for everybody on the world stage. Oh, I just love Garrett Thule, and especially up at the midfield position. Harrison off the split dodge, kicks to Pinnell. Pinnell flushed out. Sam Bullock doing the job defensively. Thule lowers the shoulder and slings one high. It'll be backed up by Mundorf. It'll stay Team USA ball. Youth at attack, Mundorf is obviously the veteran his second United States national team, but Holman, a graduate a year ago from Carolina. Pinnell, only a year removed. Mundorf going fancy behind the back, rejected by Warren Brown. Mark, in the couple of games that you've now seen, Brendan Mundorf here in the World Championships, three major surgeries in the last year and a half. How does he look to you? He, he looks good, he looks good. He doesn't look to be 110%, but he's a gritty player, and even when he's healthy, He's got a, a sort of an awkward approach to the game. The Australians have the ball. As far as the keys to the game are concerned for them, what say you? They've got to limit the penalties. Seven against Japan. The United States extra man will eat them up if they spend that much time in the penalty box. And you've got to defend the USA middies. The first two goals of the game, Seabald and Rabel. The short stick D middies have to do a better job for the Sharks. On the move now, Warren Brown says, follow me on the clear for the Australians in gold. They trailed the United States 2-1. Seabald and Rabel have sandwiched tallies around a strike from Matt Diver. The hustle on the sideline turns out to be a potential fast break for Pinnell, who lost the ball. That allows Australia to get back in the hole. Pinnell turns, and Lawson skips it inside on the cut. Burns bounced it wide. Stuff attempt from Holman came right through the crease. It'll stay with Team USA. I'll tell you one thing, the Australians are making the Americans pay when they come through their porch. Behind the ball, a lot of, a lot of chippiness. Here's a neat little story. You see this matchup here? It's Brendan Mundorf against John Takarua. Back in 2006, Mundorf played for the Australians. During the tryout process, he stayed with Takarua. And tonight, they guard one another. Takarua, four-time member of the Australian national team. 
he'll have his hands full with number two in blue, but I think it, it's a good matchup. Mundorf, not a speedster, more of a guy who throws his body around, and Takarora, more of a physical stand-up defender. Seaball was actually being shut off there, and the pass worked out just fine. Rabel on the sweep. Paul Rabel, the MVP of the World Games four years ago. Contested in Manchester, England, where they will be in 2018. And it'll be the fourth time for that city to host the games. Seaball to the alley against Bullock. Rolls back for Holman, and Buchanan scorched one wide. You can see the quick slides whenever the middies for the U.S. dodge. So what they're doing is they're rolling back and cutting backside, getting good looks. Mundorf off the speed dodge. Rabel tries his left. And going low to make that stop was Warren Brown. A day ago, it was Tom Vickery getting the starting nod from Glenn Meredith. In transition, this is Thomas Graham. Graham, the youngster, 21 years of age, recently voted the best player in the Australian club leagues. Back home in Australia, they are in season. They play Tuesdays and Thursdays. This national team performance, after beating Japan yesterday in overtime 14-13, the Aussies were third on the podium in Manchester four years ago. Actually, they finished third in the last four world championships. They've been to the gold medal match in 1982 and 1994, both losses to the United States. Alex Brown gets a pick. He was looking for Stiglish all the way. It bounces back to the goal scorer, Diver, and the Aussies will set up six on six. When you think about the pride in the Australian program, the players who have come through, Pierre Kahn, Jeff Kennedy, how about Gordon Purdy? Australia wants to get back into that top echelon. They've been sort of supplemented, supplanted a little bit by Canada, and of course the Iroquois have quite a squad here in Denver. Those three would be the pre-tournament favorites. As Brown makes the move, this one to the corner. He scores, Alex Brown. Second goal for Australia when attacking the right hand behind the cage. And here we're going to see Alex Brown take Matt Abbott. He just gets top side. And that's not bad defense by Abbott, but he almost uses the American short stick midfielder as a screen as he whips it past Drew Adams. Beautiful individual effort by Alex Brown. And just like we were in the first game today on this field, for us at least, Iroquois and Japan, we're on the teeter-totter back and forth. It's 2-2. Friends, listen up. ESPNU's coverage of the FIL World Lacrosse Championships. They continue tomorrow. We have another doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, Japan battling the United States. Then at 10, it's the Iroquois and Canada. The FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Tomorrow at 7 and 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Our thanks to Trusted Choice, independent insurance agents for all of their efforts. As we are enjoying Australia and the United States, four years ago, Team USA put a hurting on the Aussies. It was a 21-5 game in pool play. And don't forget, I don't think the Australians have forgotten about that. This is a, an Australian team. They don't wow you with anything in particular. I mean, they had, I think, about 10 or 11 different goal scorers last night against Japan. So they're well-balanced. They're not top-heavy with superstars. Takarua, obviously the four-time uh, national team member, but much like the United States, they're very much a team, and they're not going to back down. Greg Gurenlian digs in against Ben Newman. Of course, Team USA also features Chris Eck at the face-off mark. It was Gurenlian going four for five against Jeff Snyder of Canada on Thursday. He's taken the lion's share of the work in the early going of this game now, more than halfway through the opening quarter, deadlocked at two. Gurenlian pops it free. The hatchet check comes from Andrew Hamm. Australia's Matt Fuss, maybe the fastest guy on the field for Australia, seven in the goal, helps on the clear, and Newman has open space through midfield. Hartzell looked to go over the head with that check, and then he attacks Newman, who still maintains possession. Well, Hartzell's in an in-your-face defender. He is not going to back down. He is going to make you earn every inch of this field. Pressure defense incorporated by the United States. We talked a lot with Dave Petromala, the defensive coordinator for Team USA. He used one quick word to describe Hartzell. He said charismatic. Kind of guy who will obviously get your attention on the field as he looks for a ground ball here. Hartzell took a chop across the wrists. 
As this ball will scurry out of bounds. The officials will give it to Australia in gold. Well, Hutz is a guy that just earns everything. Division three, Salisbury before that, junior college. And then now he's been a perennial all-star in Major League Lacrosse, but he's played for three or four different franchises over the last five years. An All-American in Division Three with Salisbury, the 07 national champs, had Hartzell in a featuring role. The one thing we also know about Australia, whenever they move up in class, so to speak, they will be patient. They won't force it. Team USA will look to turn them over on the ride, but no troubles here for the guys in gold. It's six on six at the offensive end. Marty Hyde, he was kept in check by the Japanese an evening ago. He was very quiet. This guy was not. Morton turns it on for Steven Mortimer, who did pick up a goal in that overtime win. Pickett, very good on the dodge from behind the cage. That pass is too low. Bouncing towards the midfield stripe. An easy ground ball for the likes of Steve Mortimer. 6.50 with which to work in the opening quarter. In the FIL World Championships, you play running time, 20-minute quarters. Good double coming there from Lee Zink. Veteran defender in the Major League Lacrosse ranks. The MLL's best defender each of the last two years. Abbott on the go, looking for the fast break. Pinnell slings it to Mundor. Slam dunk score! Mundorf was in the crease. That's a crease violation, no goal, wash it out. It'll stay 2-2. One of two things happened there. Either Mundorf hit the crease line before scoring, or he made contact with the goaltender, Warren Brown. What Brown plays that high crease. Remember, in international lacrosse, you can dive, leave your feet voluntarily, but you cannot make contact with the goaltender. Advancing the ball now, Alex Brown for the Australians. At the other end, that fast break showed off the brilliance of Rob Pinnell, who can see things materialize so quickly on the break. Well, how about the how about the speed of Matt Abbott? I mean, white lightning streaking up the field here at Dick Sporting Good Park. You won't you won't need to sell me on him. I think he's the best player in the pro game. Stiglish sent it wide. Durkin right there defensively for the United States. And there were a lot of kudos given to Team USA's defense against Canada. What stood out to you the most? Really just the adjustment. The last time these two teams met, Canada and the U.S. was 2012, and Canada picked them apart with the two-man game. Dave Petromala and his defense made sure that did not happen again. They packed it in. They defended the two-man game brilliantly. I thought the communication was excellent as well. See how the turnover story plays out tonight as this is zipped high and wide by Kyle Harrison. Great to see back him, uh, see him back in the in the national team picture. A, a player who has just worked really hard to get himself back in shape, was in the LXM tour, came back to Major League Lacrosse as a member of the Ohio Machine, and playing an offensive role here for Team USA. Stars and Stripes have misfired on their last half dozen shots. Make it seven, Pinnell was robbed there as a the goaltender, Warren Brown, stood tall. Right now, a little too much one-on-one -on -one for my taste. Move the ball a little bit better. Fool on the, the kicks. Hook. There's Pinnell. There's a flag down. He pumps and scores. Rob Pinnell. It's going to be a hold against the Australians. Wiped out by the goal. I love the patience of Rob Pinnell. Watch him absorb the check. And he just relaxes. He sees that there's no slide coming, and he doesn't take the ball into the heart of the Australian defense. He simply composes himself, takes a step, and just finishes cleanly. Heady play by Rob Pinnell. So many of his teammates, the coaches, the scouts, say of Pinnell, the best is still yet to come, as he's picked up his third goal of this tournament. Had a couple of goals and an assist for Richie Mead back on Thursday night. The bench boss looks out at Chris Eck taking this draw. Eck winning it cleanly from Newman and going right to the cooker. Pinnell off the face dodge. The stick checked. Brown aggressively out of the cage to earn the ball for the Australians. Newman ran into a double team, bouncing off of Pinnell, and he brings it across into the offensive third for the Aussies. Really impressed with Newman against Japan. Struggled mightily, did the Australians at the faceoff dot against Geno. Of, of Japan and Newman came in and won two huge face-offs in the overtime sessions to get the Australians possession and help them win that game.
Diver and Brown on the board for the Australians. The picket pass, too hot to handle for Anson Carter. Team USA with strikes from Seaball, Rabel, and Pinnell and a 3-2 lead in the latter stages of the opening quarter. Kyle Hartz will chest this one down to himself. USA with the time of possession advantage, the shots advantage, and a slim one-goal margin to build upon. If you're Australia, you have to feel pretty good that you're only down by one at this time. U.S., a little too cute around the cage. Mundorf, too many fakes. Pinnell with that last finish. I think they just need to... You need to shoot on Warren Brown. I don't want to take anything away from the Australian netminder, but I haven't been super impressed with his stopping ability. Rabel to the split dodge, keeps it hot for Mundorf. And then Holman heaves it high. Rabel was there to back it up. It'll stay USA ball. Marcus Holman now, 23 years of age, the Baltimore, Maryland native who grew up about three miles from Homewood Field, the home base for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. His daddy was an All-American there. Goalie coach now at the University of North Carolina, volunteer assistant. And his sister, Sydney, a heck of a women's player for the Tar Heel ladies. From this point of view, we see the defense for the Australians packing it in, communicating. So important at this end of the field as Buchanan barks out another offensive set. See how the play develops in front of Warren Brown. It's Buchanan on the isolation. Mundorf rips it off the post. The ricochet out of bounds will be USA ball. US using the two-man game, little pick action to thwart the quick slides of the Australian defense. Mundorf normally so gifted off the dodge, electing to pull the trigger. Most recently, as Rabel looks for some shooting space, Holman sets and fires, he scores! Marcus Holman. Little weave action from the American offense. Great movement. Left of the screen, Rabel exchanges up top, gets the defense confused, the space and separation that Holman needs, and he just stings the upper corner with an absolute bullet past Warren Brown. Such a fluid shooting motion for Marcus Holman. High energy performer for Team USA. First time in the game that one team has put goals back to back. Largest lead on the night. Mundorf looking for another one and Warren Brown stayed stapled to the post long enough. Quick restart, Brown's caught. It's an open net for Holman. A cat and mouse game, and it turns out to be brilliant for USA fans. What a smart play. Warren Brown is so active, and he thought he had won the race to the end line to win possession. But look at Rob Pinnell. Empty net, a frozen rope about 30 yards, and Holman, that might be the easiest goal he's ever scored in his life. For Marcus Holman, two goals in less than a minute. The last minute, in fact. Uh, of the opening quarter, we are done with 20 minutes. Team USA, after a two-hour wait, the boys have their running legs under them. The United States in front of Australia, 5-2 from the opening jump. Team USA in the blue division, looking to continue its world dominance. The 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships, presented by Trusted Choice, continue right after this. World Lacrosse Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you. Team USA closing the opening quarter on a roll. Three goals in a little less than five minutes. They've opened up a 5-2 advantage over Australia. And when it comes to shots taken, Team USA in heavy favor. Really peppering Warren Brown with quality opportunities. Eck going right to the cage off the draw. Great catch by Pinnell. As he will calm things down and work six on six. This is blue division play. On a night when Team USA and Australia had to wait some two hours. Wait out severe lightning and thunder delays. 
The Americans have controlled every face-off and now have the scoreboard much more to their liking. Ned Crotty ran into Callum Robinson, a.k.a. the Big Koala. The Big Koala. Wearing two in the goal. Callum was originally headed to the University of Maryland. He's playing collegiately at Stevenson under Paul Cantabene's direction. Huge get for Paul Cantabene and the Stevenson Mustang program. I heard about him two summers ago, and he was kind of an urban legend over in Owings Mills, Maryland. A guy, six foot five, 225 pounds, coming to Stevenson to play defense. Rabels slips one five hole on Warren Brown. Paul Rabels patented left alley drive. That's a huge goal for the United States. I, I thought the two goals allowed by the Australians, especially the last one at the end of the first quarter, could take a lot of wind out of their sails. And when you have a team down, you just keep compounding with it. Rabel in such great shape. Look at just a beautiful split dodge. They're not going to give him the right hand, no problem. Split right to left. And a beautiful uh, low bouncer off the artificial surface here at Commerce Park. Rabel and his Team USA teammates electing Kevin Lavelle, the captain, the elder statesman on this squad, the high-scoring attackman. As the United States continues to add face-off win after face-off win, eight in a row, they've opened up a four-goal cushion, their largest lead on the day. Rabel, part of that uh, leadership periphery, he's been one of those guys who's obviously going to have an impact on the field as well as off of it. Yeah, and I think that's where he's really matured and developed as a player. Everybody knows Rabel's going to get goals, he's going to get assists, he's going to get a lot of attention from opposing defenses, but can he make his teammates better? And that answer is yes, and that's what he's done not only as a member of the Boston Cannons, but especially here as a member of Team USA. Alex Brown challenged by Tucker Durkin. Ball down on the deck. Newman didn't catch it. It bounced all the way through to the defender there, John Takarua, who will venture into the offensive end. Burns, who I thought was extraordinary with his short stick defensive midfield play the other night, forcing the turnover. Folks, Sunday, ESPNU brings you coverage of the College Bass Regionals, the nation's top college anglers coming to compete. College Bass Regionals, number two, tomorrow, 10 a.m., ESPNU. You can also watch live on Watch ESPN. Sounds like a lot of Louisiana Monroe and North Alabama. I have a feeling they're at the top of the list. <laughs> Don't ask me why. The Raging Cajuns? Yeah. We have bass on ESPN. I, I didn't know that. Be sure to watch. Three and a half minutes into the second quarter, we have FIL World Lacrosse Championship action unfolding. In the blue division, Iroquois pounded Japan earlier today. Thule working out from behind the goal. And open Harrison scorched one wide, and that took a big bite out of the defender, who remains on the deck. Harrison hobbled as well, shaking it off of his ankle. Looks like Robinson got him at the end of that play. But that shot had some pepper. Poor Andrew Ham. Andrew Ham. Oh. And then we see Robinson cleaning Harrison's clock, and it looked like Harrison's front of his foot got caught in the turf here. Good to see Ham up and at him. I was watching Harrison in warm-ups, and he was off the mark like that in the warm-up session as well. I mean, that shot was a good three, four yards off. He's up, and so is Kyle Harrison, for that matter, who spent the last 15 or 20 seconds pawing at the turf, trying to flex that leg. He, he's still and limping ankle. noticeably. And that hurts his game. He is a quick speed merchant. His role has changed on Team USA, more of a between-the-lines defensive guy in the midfield position. Pennell's the quarterback over the top for Harrison. Didn't foil him from that good-looking split dodge. His drive deflected away and out of bounds. It'll be Australia ball. We introduce you to Callum Robinson, two in the gold. Says he likes to grind the attackman down through the course of a game. Grind him down, beat him down. He is a physical player. How about that goal he scored last night? Australians trailing 10-7. He comes in on the break. And the long pole for the Japanese kept checking him, kept checking him. And Robinson fighting him off like he's a little gnat. And then gets a nice bounce shot to really get the momentum back on the 
Australian side. That's Mark Dixon. I'm Joe Beninati. We are at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. This is the FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. We shout out thanks to all the men and women in our crew for their efforts. This soggy day once more in Commerce City, Colorado, about 10 minutes away from downtown Denver. Team USA defending its world championships. 38 different teams in attendance at this tournament. The last time the United States was the host for an FIL World Games in 98, there were eight teams. And the Aussies convert. Belial buried his man, but Alex Brown gets up and celebrates and goes down and celebrates. I tell you, when, when the ball goes behind the cage for Australia, good things happen. A little bit of a loose ball, Pickett picks it up, and then Brown with a nice finish. So a broken play, Pickett is able to pick up the loose garbage, and they get it to Brown, and he sticks it. We'll see if this is a dead ball foul, which I think it is, as Alex Brown gets some medical attention on the Australian bench. So a make it, take it for the Golden Green as they will not have to face off and will enjoy a 6-on-5 opportunity. Brown tallied in the opening quarter for Australia. He gets one here in the second quarter, which is just past the six-minute mark against Drew Adams. Big netminder who's led Major League Lacrosse in total saves in seasons past. Started playing goal, Drew did, when he was in the fourth grade. Figured that just that was the right spot for him and he was going to stay put there. I remember watching him play in a recruiting tournament years ago that I was officiating out of Springfield, Pennsylvania, Springfield High. And, and I walked away saying, whoever that kid is, he's, he's something else. It's going to be all right someday, huh? Jesse Schwartzman backs him up. Jesse had seven saves, went the distance in the win over Canada back on Thursday. Australia, the extra man, six on five. Lawyerson feeds. Morton attacked by Durkin. Nigel Morton stays calm. A dozen seconds in the EMO for Australia. Australia carrying the ball too much in this extra man sequence. Let the ball do the work, get the defense rotating to get a quality look. Stiglish to Carter. This drive is from Diver. A good crossover save by Adams, who makes his first stop on the night and yields to the one-man clear, Adam, Matt Abbott. Adams read it all the way. You can see Diver must have tipped him off with the eyes going to that far post. And, Adams just sweeps his arms across and makes a brilliant save. Here's Dan Burns, the man who went from walk-on to captain at Maryland. Beautiful one-touch passing in the score for Ned Crotty. Burns and Bernhardt made a living in transition at the University of Maryland. And here we're gonna see it on full display. Slow break. Burns recognizes Bernhardt, and oftentimes midfielders are hesitant to give it to the long poles. Not in this case. Bernhardt can handle the wand as well as anybody. Just slots it down to Ned Karate for the finish. Terrapin to Terrapin to Blue Devil. Hey. That usually doesn't work. That's, the, that's international lacrosse. <laughs> Procedure against Garenlian, who's a disbeliever in that call, gives the lacrosse ball to the Australians who are trailing 7-3. The Aussies get credited for their first face-off win of possession. Anson Carter's behind the goal. You know, I saw him earlier in the week at the Vale shootout. Carter was shooting darts from the outside. He was relatively quiet an evening ago, held to an assist against Japan. Will Pickett looking for a screen. Abbott there to defend and stroll with him. Nine minutes into quarter two. Team USA had five on the board after the first frame. Diver working downhill. Mortimer's pass, too hot to handle for Stiglitz. Burns will run with good speed. Kick to the wing to Pinnell, took his eyes off it for a second. On the scoop, Andrew Hand. And punch, counter punch, back come the Aussies. Mortimer, four on three. Great anticipation of the play there. The defense turned in by Michael Evans. Bump to the end line, kick back to Mortimer, and he says, let's slow the tempo. Great knockdown by Michael Evans. And then you could see on the ensuing loose ball, he wasn't interested in picking up a stat in GB. He was looking to beat up the Australians. His defense right now of Durkin 
and Evans flanking Mitch Bilal in the middle. 33 and 51 in blue. We'll let you know that they are there. Looking for a pound of flesh, you say. Oh, Durkin will do that. Oh, yeah. Evans will do that. Evans is the bully of the defense. And I mean that in a good way. Yeah, I thought you did. Thomas Graham. Young pup plays it back behind the cage for Matt Fuss, who heading into tournament play was an alternate. But an injury to Tom Freeman opened the door for number seven in gold. On the kick for Graham. This way to Nigel Morton, last night's hero. As the lights are starting to take effect here at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. We are not in the main stadium. This is field 10. Hartzell keeps it alive, and then the whistles blare out. Offside against Team USA, it'll be Australia ball. More than halfway through the second quarter. Paul Rabel has a pair of goals for Team USA. Alex Brown, two for the Aussies. It's 7-3 for the red, white, and blue. Play a little bit tattered here in the last couple of minutes. Look at the turnovers. The United States at half of their total, what they had in the whole game against the Canadians. But that save by Adams, that could have that's a two-goal turnaround. Instead of driver sticking it on the extra man opportunity, he makes the great save. The transition opportunity at the other end. The United States cashes in. So instead of being at 6-4, we're at 7-3. That's huge for the Americans. Anson Carter picked up by Evans, who will throw a myriad of different stick checks at you throughout the night. Alex Brown keeps it hot. Newman fumbles, and then he'll try on Matt Abbott for size out of the corner. A low-angle look at this drive towards the cage. Carter, bang! Anson Carter. Again on the invert, the Australians. And you don't see this every day. Players getting a step and really running by Matt Abbott. Beautiful feed. And then Carter just paints the corner. By beating Matt Abbott, you get the United States defense sliding. Therefore rotating, and the Australians doing a great job of finding the open spaces. 30-year-old attacker Anson Carter gets himself on the score sheet. And makes this a 7-4 game as the time continues to run. Greg Gorenlian digging deep. Wow. Great whistle recognition by Gorenli on that last faceoff. Timed that perfectly, didn't he? As Pinnell keeps it alive for Jesse Bernhardt. The United States will get its offensive-minded subs on. Dominating at the faceoff X, it's led to a slim three-goal advantage. Rabel set to go along with Buchanan, his Boston Cannon teammate in Major League Lacrosse. No collegiate players on the roster, no present current collegiate players. Crotty on the turn, Brown makes the stuff and comes floating through the midfield for Callum Robinson. Rabel runs him down and forces him back. Great ride from Team USA as the flags hit the turf. Big koala getting treated like a big pinata. Nicely done by you. The officials have a call. Six and a half to go in the opening half. With the United States on top by three. After the slash call, Dave Petromala talking with Jeff Tambroni. Those two, for the moment, on the same side with Team USA, but in the future, they'll be Big Ten rivals. Tambroni at Penn State. Petromala at Johns Hopkins, as of July 1, Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland joining that Big Ten lacrosse conference. In addition to Rutgers. Lawyerson closing in, giving some room. Diver on the perimeter as the Australians circle it up. Change the point of attack now for Morton. Behind the goal, Stiglish and then Anson Carter. Driving to the crease, good stuff saved by Drew Adams. He wasn't buying any of those fakes. ESPN News coverage of the FIL World Lacrosse Championships continue Monday. England looking for a win against the United States. It's the FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Monday, 7 Eastern on ESPNU, a game you can also see live on Watch ESPN. As we watch Australian netminder Warren Brown kind of cheat up and play a higher arc. Adams is more of a heels on the line goaltender. And that last 
offering by the Australians was a great example. Didn't step away from his pipe. Bernhardt scores! Jesse Bernhardt finds space in the heart of the Australian defense. Second consecutive goal triggered by this athletic and fast defensive midfield unit. Look at Matt Abbott. He's about half speed right there. And he recognizes Bernhardt, who posts up in the middle of the Australian defense, and the confidence of Abbott to slot that ball right inside the big number 36. And look at the turn and finish. That's a guy with a 70-inch lacrosse stick in his hand. Jesse started to play lacrosse, ironically enough, in the fourth grade, Mark. He was attending a lacrosse camp in Orlando that was led by Dave Cotter, of all folks. A man who currently coaches him with the Chesapeake Bayhawks of Major League Lacrosse. And recruited him to the University of Maryland. Exactly. Crotty snaps the pass for Mundorf. Brendan looking to the bench for instructions. Team USA doubling up the Australians with four minutes to go. In the second quarter, running time. The only time the clock should stop for injuries or for the final three minutes of regulation in the fourth. CBO strikes again, Joe Beninati. Not again. Calling the offsides. Look. CBO, things... CBO, chief bench chief official, bench by the way. Chief bench official, the, thor the fourth official joining the, the on-field three. He has all the authority that the on-field officials have. Offsides, slashes, trips anything and that time he caught players stepping on when they shouldn't we saw a quick look at kentaro shimizu it is a thankless job it is especially when you're commentating the game <laughs> it's just, no advantage is gained you know come on but hey we all have a job to do exactly takarua in his fourth world championship this man after the games in england put on almost 40 pounds he figured his competitive lacrosse days were over and then glenn meredith said you know i'm not, you could come to the next camp i'm not going to put you on the team but you can come he was suddenly motivated got back into it dropped the weight shed the weight and has turned out once again to be a leader for the guys in the green and gold yeah and, and, and making a national team four times i mean you think about the united states the equivalent of that on the american is vinnie sombrato uh the the, the midfielder from hofstra uh, it, it is such an accomplishment because not only are you competing against younger athletes, at, at some point you're kind of competing against yourself and father time. And to be in shape and in a position to represent is an amazing accomplishment. Takarua's pass was picked off there. John wasn't too thrilled with himself last night. He made a couple of costly mistakes against the Japanese. We have two flags down on the turf after a heavy collision near midfield. Well, how about Mitch Palau? Typically the long pole defender. Here's the first one. Can be a push or a cross check. Take your pick on Nigel Morton. And then he compounds his mistake by just shoving Mitch Belial. Now let's see how the United States works the ball on extra man. We mentioned this when we saw Iroquois here earlier in the day take a Team Japan apart. We'll see if the United States will use effective play on their special teams. There's a timeout here with 1.46 to go. A chance for us to step aside. Richie Meads squad has this game under control. Coach Meads a little bit up in arms. We're back to Denver right after this. Welcome you back to the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships. Presented by Trusted Choice. Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Commerce City, Colorado, where Paul Rabel and Team USA have a four goal cushion over their friends from Australia. Latter stages of the opening half, highlights of course to come between quarters two and three. Callum Robinson and the Australian man down defense put to the task now for 90 seconds worth. Mundorf scanning, choosing Lawson, Rabel, inside Holman off the crossbar. Nicely executed play, and Holman hit heavy metal there. Down on the deck, it bounces loose for Seabald, who started the scoring for the United States. Rabel closing in with Lawson, who's a deadly accurate shooter. And once more, multiple, and I mean four, flags on the field. <laughs> 
both referees saw it. It's Michael Evans and Marty Hyde behind the play just jacking each other. The officials are quick on the draw. I'm I mean, telling getting you. those flags out. We, we are out west. It's the fastest gun in the west. The unsportsmanlike conduct penalties assessed. And the United States has 57 seconds with which to work in the opening half. Yeah, consider the it, offsetting penalties, if you will. But now the Americans, five on four. Play started, and then just as soon as it did, the officials need to confer, huddling up at the table. Kevin Cassis there, he caught briefly on Team USA's bench. The assistant coach, who was the captain of the United States team in 2010. This is where you do not want to be the CBO because now he is going to get an earful from the American Yeah, bench. you really hear it. You really hear it. And Richie Meade fighting mad there in the middle of the screen. I'm not quite sure what the protocol is here and the mechanic that the officials are following to give possession to Australia, offsetting penalties simultaneous, and the Americans had possession, so you would think it would go back to the American side. A couple of very spirited lacrosse games for Team Australia. They always want to show off and do their best against the United States, and then tomorrow they face their arch rival, England, the European champs of 2012. A team that's never beaten Australia in a senior men's competition. The English would like to change that tomorrow. Team England's been waiting all day, just like Canada, for the nightcap after the two-hour delay here. Those guys are likely to be playing around midnight. They're going to they're gonna have breakfast you, out here. You can check it out Four, on no, ESPN3.com. Fourth meal. <laughs> 11 seconds with which to work in the half. The Aussies are content to play keep away. Alex Brown has two of their four goals. Callum Robinson, as time expires, we played 40 minutes at Dick's Sporting Goods Park. Glenn Meredith clapping his hands. The Australians, they were in a 2-2 battle for quite a while. Rabel's been shooting straight. He has a pair. The United States leads by four. Stay right there. We'll have halftime highlights. A whole bunch more for you coming up. USA and Australia with World Championship Lacrosse on ESPNU. A breezy and blustery night in the Rocky Mountains. It hasn't dampened the spirits of the Australian fans. Watching World Championship Lacrosse action unfold on ESPNU. Team USA in front 8-4. Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon with you and Mark. From a highlight standpoint, Team USA follows 99's lead. Yeah, Rabel just with some time and space and the stare down after scoring. And then you want to take away his right? Fine, I'll just split your left. But I thought really in the second quarter, a difference maker was Drew Adams. When the Australians were threatening with several man ups, Adams made several key saves. Look at that beautiful side to side save. And then he hugs his pipe defends his goal line and makes a stop. He always stays so calm, cool, and collected in there. From a numbers perspective, domination on the U.S. side. Yeah, no question, you, especially when you look at the shots, and the reason they're getting that many shots is the face-offs, and I love the transition game. The United States is more athletic and faster than the Australians, and they're proving it with the likes of Matt Abbott, Dan Burns, and Jesse Bernhardt. Oh, okay, so take us inside the minds of the Team USA coaches now as they look forward to this second half of this game tonight. What are they trying to fine-tune? I, I think they're trying to fine-tune their shooting a little bit. I thought they had some quality opportunities that were just off the mark of the cage. And then I think defensively, they're always working on the communication. We've seen Australia take advantage of some invert one-on-one -on -one matchups, so tightening up that, that, that type of slide, those slide packages and their individual defense when the Aussies invert them. They break their defensive huddle to the United States. When we return, Dick's Sporting Goods Park. We'll have the second half for you on ESPNU. As we welcome you back to the 2014 FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice, Independent Insurance Agents, Skies have lightened, rain has subsided, 
Lightning has gone away, thank goodness. This game was delayed two hours from its original start time. Joe Beninati and Mark Dixon with you as we just cross past 10 o'clock back home in the east. The Aussies come a-running, zipping one wide. It's already Sunday night for them back home. This is day three of the FIL World Lacrosse Championships. ESPN's continuing coverage on ESPNU and ESPN3.com. The game that will follow on this field, England and Canada on ESPN3. Quinn Kesnick and Paul Carcaterra will take you home on that one on the late night edition. Ben Newman on the ball, turns it for Pickett, who was a driving force in Australia's overtime win over Japan in game one. So these two teams in pool play, each with a mark of one and zero. There are six teams in the blue division of these world championships. Pass to the front, deflected down. Flag hits the turf. We were whistle and flag plagued in the opening 40 minutes. Foul's going to be on Matt Abbott of the United States. Fans that normally watch our NCAA covers will notice once the ball hits the ground with a flag down here in international lacrosse, the play is blown dead immediately. So a little bit of a nuance and a rule for NCAA that play's not killed until the defense gains possession. Six on five for the Australians in gold. Patiently working it on the perimeter to Nathan Stiglish. He's normally their inside man. Five in the golden green. There he is at goal line extended. Playing catch with Nigel Morton. Diver. Cranks this one, blocked by Bernhardt. Jesse Bernhardt, who struck for Team USA in the opening half. This one's off the face mask of Drew Adams in goal tonight. And Adams' mask was damaged on that play. And the officials will give him a break to get things set. Right in the kisser. Here we see Driver. You can hear it all the way up here, Ricochet off of the face mask of Drew Adams. So you want to play goal <laughs> at the highest level in this sport. Be ready for some 100 mile an hour plus heaters. Lawyerson off the box fake for Diver again. Bounce shot score. That's a beauty. Textbook overhand bounce shot. And it comes off quick at the turf here at field number 10. Little exchange up top. Drivers thinks about it. Okay, you're going to give it to me. And he just sticks it. That is a beautiful shot by Drivers. And now the defense of the United States is going to have to collapse on him a little bit quicker. Mark, the original angle that we showed from the reverse end zone look gave you the appreciation of how much spin is on that ball and how it takes to the turf and caroms away from Adams' reach. And also where you need to bounce it. A lot of younger players will shoot it right at the goalie's feet, and that's a, a good time for a goaltender to make a save. About a foot or two out in front of the goaltender is a really tough proposition, especially with a high bouncer. Really a lost art in a sport of lacrosse when you figure how these howitzers always just kind of shoot for net instead of angles on bounce shots. We've seen a lot of Marcus Holman, number one in the blue for the United States. We haven't seen their captain on the field, or at least briefly, if any, time at all for Kevin Lavelle. Looks like Mundorf and Crotty are alternating quarters, at least up to this point. Mundorf started the game. Crotty was here in the second stanza. Now Mundorf back here in the third frame. Crotty, Team USA's hero from four years ago in the big win over Canada. You can in a sizzler off the pipe. Brown had no chance, and that one rang the iron. Just love the way Rabel and Buchanan work off of each other. The spacing is excellent. It's almost like they're on a string. As Rabel attacks, Buchanan gives him the proper spacing to draw slides and get the ball to Buchanan. They've been pro teammates now with one another for some five years in Boston. Warren Brown has gone the distance in goal for the Australians. He did not start the game an evening ago against Japan. That belonged to Tom Vickery, who's stayed parked on Glenn Meredith's bench so far. And it was weird, at the end of the first half, I saw Vickery warming, him, warming himself up, and then he took shots at halftime, leading us to believe 
he was going to come in for the second half of action. Coach is directing traffic. We tell you ESPNU's coverage of the FIL World Lacrosse Championship continues tomorrow. Double header action. Japan and the U.S. at 7 Eastern. Then at 10, it's Iroquois and Canada. The FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice tomorrow, 7 and 10 Eastern on ESPNU. You can also watch the games live on Watch ESPN. Newman stretching his legs. The pass is intercepted. He telegraphed that. Lee Zink with a takeaway. Ahead for Buchanan. Further still to Mundor. No break opportunity for the United States. They'll play six on six. Big mistake by Newman. Love this hustle and his Jets. Him and Bullock can fly for the Australians. But to your point, he stared down the cutting attackman around the camp. I would have shot that if I was Newman. And then his front swinging attackman maybe had a chance at a rebound had it played out. Let's see from this angle how the United States chooses to penetrate that Australia defense. Swing it behind to the quarterback, Pinnell. Stall warning against the U.S. So they have to keep it in. There are no wings in World Championship Lacrosse when it comes to the restraining box. So when you say keep it in, it's that line at the, at the middle of your screen that the United States cannot go past. Lawson off the post again. A friendly ping behind Warren Brown. He appreciates it. Sets his feet. Buchanan with his second pipe shot. Stoppage in play as we continue action in the third quarter. Lawson is so accurate. Excuse me, that Lawson, David Lawson, with the offering. Second straight pipe shot, though, for the Americans after Buchanan rung it off the iron. The College Bass Regionals, number two, coming up Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's the nation's best anglers competing on ESPNU tomorrow, 10 a.m., also live on Watch ESPN. I impressed you earlier with my Northern Alabama and Louisiana Monroe. I, would, I might throw Tennessee in there, too. Maybe. Yeah, How about, uh, I don't think you're going to see, like, Duke. No. <laughs> I didn't see anybody from North Carolina. I quickly saw the top five schools and trying to remember them all. Right. Stars and Stripes against the Green and Gold. USA with an 8-5 advantage. It was 8-4 at the halftime break for Richie Meade's bunch. Jeff Tambroni's the offensive coordinator for this team, and he has been extremely impressed with their work ethic. Remember, Team USA was in Colorado Springs for a couple days in advance of this tournament, and they were very, very thankful to the Air Force Academy for being so cordial. Well, no question. And, and prior to that, it was a 30-player pool. And that was unique because seven guys were going to have to say goodbye. We have two alternates in Steel Stanwick and John Galloway, an attackman and a and a goaltender respectively, but five players were cut. And that's a tough proposition at that stage of the game when really you're a part of Team USA, competing and attending all the events, and then you know, you're know you no longer part of it. And some, some great players, Drew Snyder, chief among them, uh, didn't make this USA squad. Roll dodge Lawson, scores! Lawson got inside on Andrew Ham, and he converts. Interesting lineup out there for Team USA. Ned Crotty running some midfield with David Lawson. He gets the short stick, inside roll, duck underneath. You can dive in international lacrosse. Why is Dawson, excuse me, Lawson, dive away from the goalie? Because if you make contact with the keeper, it's a no goal and a chest bump. Duke Dave, to North Carolina. Dave Lawson, the man who is going to eventually be a premier player in the pro ranks in Major League Lacrosse. Playing these days with the Rochester Rattlers, who at MLL break were tied for first place on the pro circuit. Callum Robinson, ridden severely by the team in blue, which forces a turnover and a chance for the United States to hit double figures. They beat Canada 10-7 in their opener Thursday night, enjoyed the day off, and and had to wait a long time for this game to unfold. Two different hour-long severe weather delays. The skies have lightened. The lights are taking full effect. We're past the 8 o'clock hour here in the Rocky Mountains. With Buchanan on the invert. Working in against Newman. 
lost his footing. Rabel keeps it moving quickly. Seaball didn't make a clean catch, but he runs it down. Max Seaball in the past a 4.3840. That's quick. He's an athlete. An incredible career at Cornell. Tremendous professional career in Major League Lacrosse. And a two-time world team performer now. He's dealt with so many different injuries as Pinnell works goal line and then beyond. A shoulder, an ankle, a knee, a foot for Max. Nice to see him in good form. I think the word that comes to mind is guts. Buchanan with a bullet that was flagged down by Brown. Robinson met immediately by Rabel. When number two in goal picks up any type of loose ball, he is getting destroyed by the American ride. They have been working him over feverishly from the opening whistle. Great passing play. It's bounced high. That was the long stick defender jumping up there, Ross Hamilton. As we near the midway mark of this third quarter, the Aussies go six on six. The offensive set orchestrated by Will Pickett, matched up with Dan Burns. So many of the United States defenders stood out against Canada back on Thursday, but Burns in particular. He's been great tonight as well. I mean, what uh, a short stick defensive midfield core of Matt Abbott and Dan Burns. That is pretty sweet. And oh, by the way, you had so many more that you could have chosen from. Right. The United States is blessed in that department with great depth. As Burns will run it down. And, and that's just intelligence, in addition to hustle right there. Recognizing the high bouncer going wide of the cage and just sprinting to the end line to win possession for the United States. This is Burns running away from Lawyerson and giving the United States an offensive set at the midway mark of the third quarter. Team USA, next up for them. A date with the Japan tomorrow, 5 o'clock local time. We'll have it for you on ESPNU 7 Eastern. The Australians will square off with England on this field at 4 o'clock Eastern time. You can check all these games out on ESPN 3 as well. Ned Crotty back in a midfield for the U.S. and it changes the matchups as Marcus Holman has drawn the short stick. Accelerates, loses the defender hand, bounced it wide. Pinnell resets. Lawson great. Shake and score! Dave Lawson. Nasty with a capital N. Love the aggressiveness of the American Dodgers. Ned Crotty goes to the cage. Shot goes wide, Pinnell up to Lawson. Stutter step, inside move, and just smokes it past Warren Brown. Everybody says, watch the feet. Those feet were so flashy there. And, and, and he, the hips and the approach of the short stick defender were very poor right there. Didn't have leverage, didn't have good balance, and Lawson just exploited it. It's his second goal of this quarter. Back to back, Team USA has its largest lead of the ball game, and they have possession of the ball. They have really dominated at the faceoff X. For the most part, Greg Gurenlian has been the man in charge. Holman, right to the cage. He'll score an easy one through the air. Second empty net goal for Marcus Holman. Incredible recognition. Callum Robinson can't get to it. Warren Brown leaves his goal cage. It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Marcus Holman sticking the dive shot. And he knew he wasn't gonna be having to worry about running into the goaltender because there was no goalie in there. So smart, aggressive play by Marcus Holman. In this, his first world championship game, Marcus Holman, his first world tournament. Picking up the hat trick in this one and advancing Team USA's lead to 11-5. Well, and this is where the Australians need to make a play. Uh, this, this game is starting to get away from them a little bit. Scored the first goal of the second half. But ever since then, it's been all United States. They are pummeling the Australians when it comes to shots, as you could tell at the bottom of the screen. In the last oh, five minutes, they have a three-goal run on the board. Lawson, Lawson, and Holman. And an 11-5 cushion with which to work. I tell you, one player we have not seen 
is Kyle Harrison since tweaking that ankle earlier that, in the second quarter. Yeah, that happened when he was hit hard by Callum Robinson, if I do recall. The big koala. You don't need him falling on you at no. 240 pounds. And you're right, Mark. He has played sparingly since, if at all. Mundorf backpedaling away. Takarua looking out at his good friend. Off the isolation. Mundorf on the bounce shot over top of the goal. Buchanan right where he needed to be. Love that dodge in the right hand of Brendan Mundorf. Brendan's got it again. This time he's picked up by Matthew Fuss. Off the roll dodge. Great look inside. Buchanan kick save by Brown. Brown's athletic and he's a little unorthodox. He flies all over the cage and that time he just got enough of his foot on it to keep it out of the back of the net. Mundorf will jog towards the end line. Takarua staring daggers at him. This is the defensive matchup Big John wanted. Said he was looking forward to dealing with John Grant Jr. John not in this tournament for reasons that we can explain when time allows. Out of bounds. The officials say Australia ball. John Grant Jr. for so long on the world stage, one of the game's best for Team Canada. Not in this tournament. He's here. He's part of Team Canada's coaching staff. But after asking the event organizers for a therapeutic exemption to the testosterone treatments he takes, that request was denied. His treatment is on the anti-doping list. And instead of choosing to stop his medications, which are doctor prescribed, he had to pull himself out of this tournament and it broke his heart, obviously. Canada plays England later on tonight. Evans boots it towards the midfield on the run. Alex Brown there, bowling it ahead for Anson Carter. Yeah, I think one thing we've seen over the years there's not more fierce a competitor than John Grant Jr. And him making the decision that his health and taking the testosterone is more important than competing in this World Games, which, like you said, breaks his heart, speaks volumes to how important that treatment is. And he's always been above board with it. It's approved by the MLL, approved by NLL. He's not trying to hide anything. Guys getting in each other's grills here as the United States has opened up an 11-5 advantage. The clock keeps moving, 20-minute running time quarters. Looks like it's gonna be a slash or a trip. To Michael Evans. Richie Mead looking on from the Team USA bench. He thought it was so important for his guys to remain fresh in this tournament. It's hard to do when you're playing day after day after day now. Well, and, and even though they had to deal with the weather delay, the temperatures here are pretty good. It's not searing hot. The Iroquois played in very hot temperatures earlier today, as did the Japanese, the opponent for Team USA tomorrow. After the storms blew through here, the ones that delayed the start time by two hours, the temperatures have dropped significantly. This man is shooting hot, though. Matt Diver again. The hat trick for Diver. Makes it 11-6. Watch how Diver hides the ball from Drew Adams. Exchange pass up top, hides it, and just flings it again to off stick side. Textbook, beautiful placement, excellent execution. And the U.S. may have to cheat out on him. I thought after his last goal, they would have cheated out on him a little bit. They don't, he makes them pay. Coaching staff whispering in the ear of Diver and his teammates. Matt's got three. Australia has six. They're trailing the United States by a handful with 2.45 to go in the third quarter. Burns looking to scoop that ground ball. Kicked to safety by Hartzell. Oh, and he kabonged Sam Bullock. But there was a whistle. There's the chief bench official, Kentaro Shimizu. As the guys in the zebra stripes sort things out and eventually award possession to Australia. I'm confused. Me too. 
ESPN News coverage of the FIL World Lacrosse Championships continue on Monday. England looking for a win against the United States. The FIL World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. Monday at 7 on ESPNU. A point we can underline at the bottom of the screen. Manchester, England will be the host for the 2018 World Championships. It is the place in which the United States authored its most recent win. Team USA has won this event nine times. Canada twice. And that's it. Those are the only two nations to ever wear the crown. And I tell you, watch out for the Iroquois. Impressive last night against England. Took it to Japan earlier today. Athletic. They can play inside, outside offense. And the defense is bruising. They got a pretty good netminder in Warren Hill. I really find it interesting how Iroquois' goal for this tournament, they set it, they've underlined it. The words were to reclaim their sport. They were not in Manchester four years ago. They are very much here in Commerce City, Colorado, and will be a factor before it's all said and done. There are nine different divisions. This is the blue group. We're playing through pool play, and then teams will be bracketed, seeded. There'll be some crossover as we get into the playoff rounds, and eventually one week from tonight, a new champion, potentially, or a reigning champion will be crowned. Play getting really chippy here, Joe. Anson Carter for Australia. Mitch Balao from the United States. Off ball again in a little bit of a skirmish. Caught by the officials. Two unsportsman likes doled out. And the teams will be even strength at 5-on-5 five five with Belisle and Carter serving the penalties. After Iroquois win over Japan, they sit on top in the blue division with a mark of 2-0. and oh. Newman. Stick check by Hartzell and by Bernhardt. Just about every collision and every clash is drawing a flag now. It looked from here that the check was delivered to the top of the helmet. It looked like it did get him in the head. We'll see on the replay. Stutter step dodge. Yeah, right there. Plain as day. Just a mistimed check. Hartzell draw, you know, gets the foul. And the ears are ringing of Ben Newman. 11-6 for the United States. 20 seconds to go in quarter three. In no particular hurry are the Aussies. 15 seconds in the frame as they work on extra man. Nigel Morton. A long way from the cage. He's content to keep possession. Lawyer there as time expires in the third. So Team USA which had an 8-4 advantage at the halftime break, put a three-goal roll together. The main man in that thrust was Dave Lawson. Australia trying to mount a comeback. 20 minutes to go in regulation time for the green and gold and the red, white, and blue. For the moment, the United States on top on ESPNU. World Lacrosse Championships is presented by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents. Free to do what's right for you. City of Denver, not far off in the distance from Commerce City, Colorado, Dick's Sporting Goods Park. If you jumped on board a little late, Mark, catch us up. Rob Pinnell, goal and two assists. Marcus Holman, three goals, two empty net. And diver for Australia has been a playmaker on the extra man, which Australia has right now. They had possession at the end of the quarter, so no face-off. Let's see how the man down defense will stiffen for the United States. They are very aggressive. They press out. Zink is there. Tucker Durkin lurking on the perimeter. Lawyerson finds Morton for this sidewinder that was blocked. Bouncing high and out of bounds and staying in possession of the Aussies. Australia, third place in 2010. They've come in second in this tournament four times. Last time they did that, though, 20 years ago, back in 1994. Lawyerson gets the jump on Burns. He recovers and takes him back behind the goal. 
Matt Abbott, number three in blue, is shutting off Hyde, number eight in gold. So essentially, this is five on five lacrosse. That guy got a lot of that treatment last night from Japan. The word must be out. Fear the Hyde. Durkin working on the hands there of Diver. And Lawyerson's inverted. And Hyde finally does get a touch. Matt Abbott looking at Marty Hyde, who puts on a speed rush towards the cage and was trail checked by Abbott beautifully. On the timing there of that check, it was everything. It looks like Abbott almost stops playing when guys get the goal line extended. But he lets them get a step, and then he tries to deliver that trail check. We saw earlier in the second quarter, he got burned for one trying to do that. That time he, he hits paper. When you time it right, it looks great, doesn't it? It, it does, but if you don't, you look like a chump. Usually, <laughs> usually your goalie's digging it out of the cage. Just shy of the two-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Bottom of the hour time. Stiglish looking for the quick stick that goes wide. Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon. Shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our crew. It's been a long day. We've had a shift change or two. We've had a couple of severe weather delays. And now we have Burns, Burns down, is down on the turf. And I don't know if he looked like he may have hit his head as he tried to goose that ball to himself. You look through the resume of Dan Burns. He's had back issues and injuries in the past. So right there, yes, it looked like his head got hit by the right elbow of Benjamin Newman. Give a little look right here. Right there. The shoulder elbow hit Burns. And he went down pretty hard. That's that glancing type flow that's almost like what happens in a boxing ring. Right. You get those flash knockdowns and knockouts from hits like that. Richie Mead and Dave Petromala looking on with concern. Team USA has an 11-6 advantage, outscoring the Aussies 3-2 in the third quarter. This has been a very, very physical game, as was the U.S.-Canada game two nights ago and the Australia-Japan last night. Canada and England will follow this one on ESPN3.com. Messrs. Rabel and Hartzell hoping that Burns will be A-OK -okay as he gets a warm round of applause. Anytime you see a player get hit up high like that with the, the head or the neck, your, your first concern is always the concussive effects. Concussive, absolutely. And you look at any type of rules over the last couple of years, anything to the head and neck area, I mean, that one looked coincidental. John Takarua and the Aussie defense keeping warm, throwing the ball around while Dan Burns is helped to the sideline. As Burns makes his wobbly way. And that's a tough loss if, if he is injured and can't go. After, you don't want to speculate, but the next defensive midfielder might be Kyle Harrison, who turned his ankle earlier in this game and has not returned. Australia has possession of the ball, leaving it back behind the cage. Lawyerson on the dead run now. Newman from the top. Morton kicked away. Rebound just flashed wide, and Matt Abbott comes up with the ground ball. Actually, I think we're seeing the third short stick deep midi right at this point in time. That's Mitch Belisle with the shorty, typically a long pole close defender out there with the short stick. There are a lot of guys who are gonna line up. <laughs> a lot of guys are gonna line up for that defensive assignment. Paul Rabel, Paul Rabel was saying that uh, he wanted to have more of those responsibilities. Paul has the ball right now and is in an offensive mindset. Buchanan. Surveys the situation with Rabel. 11-6 for the United States. Warren Brown has turned him away eight times. Was credited with just one stop an evening ago in that overtime thriller with Japan. Mundorf leaves it up top for Rabel. Swing it on for Seaball. To the alley with a great speed. Bounces one high and wide. Backed up by Rob Pinnell. Seems like a while since the U.S. has been on offense. 
Jump shot. Beautiful question mark dodge. Rob Pennell just showing off. That was pretty. The speed of Rob Pennell is what makes this possible as he just accelerates through X. Gets a step on his man, turns back, and pings the upper 90. Look at the placement of this. Almost a blind shot. That is on instinct and practice. And Rob Pennell delivers a beauty to the back of the net. So much fun to watch. Rob Pennell, who is now the third leading scorer in Major League Lacrosse this season, working with the New York Lizards. He was the Cascade Rookie of the Year one summer ago. He is one of the vital cogs in Team USA's offensive approach. They're doubling up Australia in the fourth quarter, nearly five minutes deep in the frame. Holman connecting with Lawson, who was dazzling in the third quarter tonight. Ooh, pass will skip away from Dave and be a turnover to Australia. It's not something you see every day, but it just points to the fact that no matter what level you are, stick work, fundamentals, so important. After a little juggling exhibition, Mortimer plays the wing for Fuss, and then down to the corner. Lawyerson will operate. Tucker Durkin draws a bead on him. Durkin, who says the United States has a bunch of things, wrinkles in their defensive approach that could alter a team's mindset were they willing to try and stall a bit that hasn't been the case for australia they've been methodical but they've been moving forward to the net and you've seen a different defensive strategy tonight for the u.s against canada very much packed in and here against the australians pressure and they're hunting the shark ball carriers down dick sporting goods park the host venue for the World Lacrosse Championships presented by Trusted Choice. As we take a peek from behind the cage, guarded by Drew Adams. Richie Mead, true to his word, he said he had faith in both netminders, Jesse Schwartzman and Drew Adams. It was Schwartzman who authored the win on Thursday. Pennell with a brilliant goal most recently, running away from Callum Robinson. Pennell on the mad dash, floats it over the top. Lawson on the face dodge, he scores! Pennell to Lawson. And the highest of fives. Heavy play by Rob Pinnell, who picks up a tough, tough ground ball at midfield. He had Marcus Holman, but he recognized to his right some midfielders coming in to be support backside. Look at Lawson, so smooth, so fluid. The presence of mind to let the defender run by him as he ducks underneath and simply slips it past Brown. Lawson with a hat trick, Holman with a hat trick. Very good news for the United States to see their young pups delivering in such a way. And how about taking advantage of an opportunity? You have to think that Lawson getting more minutes because of the injury to Kyle Harrison. Hartzell there with a swinging gate check. Didn't come away with the ball, and instead the Aussies stick it. Lawyerson left alone. Green and gold fans. Great stick work. Good look inside by Keesing, who finds Lawerson underneath. And that's how you finish down low. You stick it and try to blow the goalie through the back of the net. Aussie fans waving those inflatable kangaroos. I thought they'd be doing the shark chomp out of, out of Jaws fame. <laughs> this green and gold group goes by the shark nickname. Lawyerson's the latest to strike, trimming the lead back to six with less than 12 minutes to go. Running time in the fourth quarter until there are three minutes left. Newman pops the draw from Gurenlian. That hasn't happened very often tonight. Belial with a pressure defense on Anson Carter. Skip it out back and set it up for Graham. 21-year-old, a bright spot, named the best player in Australia last season. He's going to be on the world stage for some time to come. Looks like there was a flag at the end of that goal scored by Australia. So now the, the Sharks, or the Fighting Joeys. <laughs> 
whatever you want to call them, they will have another man advantage. They have been potent with the extra attacker tonight. Battling now at dusk, just about nightfall here. Commerce City, Colorado, 10 or 15 minutes from downtown Denver. These World Lacrosse Championships continuing on ESPNU and ESPN3. Diver, who's had the hot hand, oh. drills the crossbar. That's as close as you can get to a goal without scoring. Morton, Lawyerson, good read by Belial. Belial on the intercept, looking for the fast break. There's Mundorf. Mundorf, four on three on the delay. Looks cross field. It's stabbed by Pinnell somehow, and he will take it to safety. You had Bernhardt, the long pole, begging for it from Mundorf. Doesn't get it in his cross, but the United States with a six-goal advantage coming off of a... Oh! Hidden ball! Rabel says, yeah! The hidden ball trip fakes Australia, and Rabel has a huge smile on his face. You fooled me. Number 99 in blue. I was wondering why Brown was looking behind him. Essentially vacating the cage. You think Pinnell has it. That's Vickery, actually. And how, how does that feel as a goalie to just hear it whiz by you? You know, I'm going to venture a guess. <laughs> Kevin Cassis is on the bench for the United States. He's the coach, head coach at Lehigh. He's an assistant for this USA team. And he loves hidden ball tricks. I've seen him do it a new, number of times in Major League Lacrosse. I can almost guarantee he was whispering in the guy's it. ears, you know, we should try one of these early on in pool play. And it worked perfectly for Rabel in the red, white, and blue. So the Masters of Disguise make it 14-7. And you have spotted Tom Vickery in the goal for Australia, 31-year-old. Made 10 saves an evening ago in about 66 minutes of work. Robinson has worked over again, but the big fella brings it ahead for Australia. Callum shaded there by Hartzell. Coughed it up. Holman on the intercept already with a hat trick tonight. Marcus Holman looking for friendly crosses as he was bumped down to the turf. The push, push with possession against the Australians. Holman turns his back and just not a smart play by Fuss. Shoving number one in blue to the ground. Traditional pocket, Joe B. Old school there, huh? I did see that. United States will go. Six on five here for the next 23 seconds. Rabel from the top. Paul Rabel, inside look. Holman, nice distribution. Lawson scores! Almost like a high post offense in basketball. Holman, the big man inside, distributing the rock. He could have turned and fired this one, but he slots it out to Lawson. And the Duke graduate just seemingly cannot miss this evening. Great step, beautiful placement, great snap of the wrist. His fourth of the evening. Back to the Garenlian wins the draw for the United States. Seven and a half to go regulation. Rob Pinnell in possession. Team USA looking to bank its second win in as many tries in advance of their date with Japan. Tomorrow you can see that game seven o'clock on ESPNU. And the Aussies will turn their attention to an arch rival. They square off with England. Tomorrow at 4, you can see that on ESPN3. Japanese are going to be hungry. 0-2, throttled today by the Iroquois. United States pinpoint in the fourth quarter, shooting 80%. Fool was denied there by Vickery. Callum Robinson driving on back. Big Koala's going to get beat down here. Big Koala <laughs> wants the collision. <laughs> Didn't get it. He's impressive between the lines. And he is not afraid to carry into pressure. And he wears no arm pads. Marcus Holman was trying to run him down. As we hear a whistle and a timeout called with six and a half to go in regulation time. 
We'll duck away for a second, pay a few bills, get you back for more World Championship Lacrosse right here on ESPNU. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Full moon in the sky over Dick Sporting Goods Park. The United States on top of Australia. 15 to 7. They've advanced an 8 4 halftime lead to the margin they now enjoy. Down the stretch in quarter four. The green and gold from Australia in possession, six on six. Carter for Will Pickett, who had a pair last night against Japan. A very dramatic game for the Aussies, but they won in overtime. Sudden victory. Drew Adams skipping around the goal crease will start it back for the United States in the blue. This has been a good workmanlike effort for the U.S. They've had to hunker down, play good defense, get goal, good goaltending. The Australian D has made the Americans work for their scores. It's been a solid effort so far for the red, white, and blue. Lee Zink, one of the masterminds on defense for the Americans, number 29 in the blue, just about a 25-minute drive from his home. He lives right here in the state of Colorado. One of the scoring heroes has been Dave Lawson. Lawson has four tonight. Three different guys with hat tricks for the Stars and Stripes. And honestly, when the 23-man roster was announced, there weren't many head scratchers. I think the coaches did a great job. But the one guy that was questioned a little bit was Dave Lawson because he beat out players like Drew Snyder. Jeremy Sieverts. Jeremy Sieverts. Actually, Sieverts wasn't even on the 30-man, so that was something that was a little bit of an upset. But Lawson has proved his medal here tonight, getting an opportunity, I have to believe, with the injury to Kyle Harrison, and he's made the most of it. Morton on the run, his pass deflected, tipped by Matt Abbott, will be Australia ball. Lacrosse is seeking Olympic sport recognition. They're hoping to get that by 2015. They want to actually participate in the games of 2024. And during the week, representatives from the International World Games Association and Sport Accord, they've been in attendance. That's the group that recommends approval to the IOC. Your thoughts, Mark, on the Olympics and lacrosse someday happily being a marriage? I think it would be great. You're seeing the explosion at the international level with 38 countries represented here in Denver. What's it gonna look like four years from now in England? I mean, are we up to 50, perhaps? And you're just seeing excellent competition, a great atmosphere. I think lacrosse would be a tremendous addition to the Olympics. Of course, when you, when you look at the landscape of the Olympics, they're looking to cut sports versus adding. Wrestling was on the chopping block. I believe it's been saved. Happy about that. But I think lacrosse would be a tremendous addition to, to the Olympic Games. It has been a wonderful festival-like, carnival-like atmosphere through three days of World Championship lacrosse action here at Commerce City. Dying stages of the fourth quarter. The United States in control. A 15-7 advantage over Australia. Mundorf speeds to the crease. Bounces one for Buchanan. He was actually looking to the crease there, but didn't find a friendly cross. Rabel on a three-goal performance after a four-point game in the win over Canada Thursday. So things are clicking for Team USA, but I think most notably at the defensive end. I'd agree with you. I thought Durkin, Evans, Belial, Zink all played incredibly well tonight. Belial being pressed into service a little bit as a short stick D midi. And the transition defense of the United States, outstanding. There's a lot of versatility on that back end. Holman backing away from pressure. Less than three minutes to go now. When the ball is out of bounds, there will be stop time. But Marcus is in no hurry to go to the cage at this moment. Team USA against Japan tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ESPNU. Rabel off the face dodge. He scores. Make it four for Agent 99. This is just size, strength, and quickness. And number 99 plays whistle to whistle. Long looping pass by Holman. Three Aussies go out to meet Rabel. Actually, number two, Robinson thought Rabel was going to uncork it earlier. Watch him turn his head to avoid getting hit in the ear hole, and he just slips it past the Australian netminder. Paul reminds us he's a DJ by night. We're making sweet music right there. On his way to the cage for his fourth. 
just padding the stats right now for the United States on its way to a second win validating a decision over Canada on Thursday and looking to stay on top in blue division play Iroquois 2 and 0 the United States will be 2 and 0 Canada which fell to the Stars and Stripes on Thursday will square off with England once we are through here you can check that game out on ESPN3.com here we're seeing the next U.S. game tomorrow against Japan. We'll have it here on ESPNU. But no clearing counts in international lacrosse. And now, but they have, will have to keep it in. There is a stall warning. And the U.S., they're second of the game, and they'll have to keep it in. They cannot go beyond the line at the top of your screen. Should be no trouble as they protect the nine-goal cushion. This is where you get worried, though. You saw Canada do it the other night, taking some gratuitous shots as the U.S. was trying just to milk the clock. I knew you were going to go there. I knew you were going to go there. We'll see if Australia just plays this straight up. Rules committee meeting in August. Your expectations to come from that? Well, obviously a shot clock will be discussed. It's a split issue. It's a hot topic. I don't know if it'll go through. At the very least, if they stay with timer on, you'll have to have a visible component to that 30 seconds for fans, players, and coaches. It has to happen if you keep the timer on and fall short of a shot clock. Buchanan continues to play keep away. The ball left the restraining box there after the officials were asking the United States to keep it in. So it's a turnover to Australia, but far little time remaining for them. Takarua, whose idol is Dave Petromala, 32 in gold, advancing the ball here. He's been watching lacrosse in the United States since he was 15 years of age. Just loves Petromala, the way he played, his intimidation, his positioning, his ability to jump up into the offensive rush. And I'm sure this has to be a thrill for John to, to look over to the U.S. bench and see his hero there. Now the brains behind the defensive efforts for the red, white, and blue. Bounce pass juggled off the head of Diver, who has been a shooting star for the Australians tonight. Ten ticks left. These two teams had to wait two hours for this game to unfold. Fans did too. They were patient. They are rewarded. The United States has a 16-7 win in the books. Solid win by Team USA. Good goaltending, terrific defense. The only negatives that I can find, the injury to Dan Burns. How serious is it? We saw him take the shot to the head. And then Kyle Harrison with the ankle. Dave Lawson, gonna be your trusted choice player of the game and he was acrobatic throughout. Preparation plus opportunity equals success. The young man's prepared, he gets an opportunity to get on the field and he has a five point night. Great job by the former Duke midfielder. A lot of those leaping high fives tonight. Lawson with a supreme accuracy. Not only does he shoot it a ton, he can put it through a thimble. As the United States advances, moves their mark to 2-0. ESPN News coverage of these world championships continuing. We'll be right back with you for Japan and USA tomorrow, 7 Eastern. And buckle your trend straps for the Iroquois versus Canada. It'll be physical. And then you've got the England-USA. How about the Iroquois-United States matchup next Tuesday at 7 o'clock? And, of course, we'll have the semifinals and championship game for you on ESPNU. A week from tonight, Team USA all gathered round. They put away the Australians in fine fashion tonight in Commerce City. For Mark Dixon, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanks for your time. To watch the entire game on replay, as well as other games on the family of ESPN Networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Three different guys with hat tricks. Lawson, Rabel, and Holman. It's all red, white, and blue from Denver.